Let's go to him in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do seek you. Uh, Lord, we want to savor your word as honey. Uh, Lord, we want you to shine your light upon our feet so that we can see what our next steps are to be. And Father, as we open up your word, which is a lamp unto our feet this morning, I just pray, Lord, that you would illuminate uh, where to step, Lord. By your Holy Spirit, we ask that you would guide us into truth. Help me to speak only your words for your glory so that Jesus might be exalted, so that he might be lifted up. We pray these things in his name. Amen. John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. Scriptures read, If we say that we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Back up to verse 7 real quick. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. I don't know how many times I've read that and immediately thought that the one another meant us together. And I think that it does mean that. But the pronoun one another refers back to what is stated earlier in verse 7. If we walk in the light, who is we? That's us. As he is in the light, who is he? That's Christ. We have fellowship with one another. So the he and the we have fellowship. It's that we have fellowship with Jesus. And oh, by the way, that does spill over into fellowship between Christians. So it's not an either or. Is he talking about fellowship with the Christian and to Jesus, or is he talking about Christian to Christian? Yes, he's talking about both. But primarily, it, 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 it first of all starts with our fellowship with Christ, our intimacy with Christ. Intimacy with, intimacy with Christ is a fragile thing. Not because Jesus is a fragile thing. Jesus is not fragile. He's always triumphant. He's always victorious. He is indestructible. He has given his life on the cross, and he cannot be crucified again. Nothing can hinder him. However, we hinder ourselves and our fellowship with him. If you look at verse 8, verse 8 says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves in the truth is not in us. And this is what we looked at last week. This is all kind of rehashing what we talked about last week. Last week, I said that the message was going to kind of be uh, a skeleton in the sense we were going to look at the truths of Scripture in terms of here's what 1 John uh, chapter 1, verses 6 through 9 says, and here's what it means. And then this week, we're going to come back and we're going to put some flesh, put some flesh on that skeleton, see what it looks like. What does this mean practically for us, where we're at today, where we're going to be in 10 years? How do we, how do we walk in the light? What does it look like to confess? What does it look like to, 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 to deceive ourselves and to slide into darkness? And so we're going, to take a, we're going to take a look at that. For me, this walking in the light, the starting point was 1988, thereabouts. Everybody that walks in the light does so from a certain point in time on. No one is born into a relationship with Christ. This shouldn't come as news to, to, to you if you've been coming to Grace Community Church for a while. But in case you have not, there are, God has no grandchildren. You are not born physically into the kingdom of God. You are not born physically into a relationship with Jesus where you are already walking in the light. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, that we are all dead in our transgressions and sins. And that's all of us. There aren't any exceptions to that. All of us are born dead in our transgressions and sins, and we continue to live dead in our transgressions and sins, and we continue to love the darkness and flee from the light because our deeds are evil and the light exposes them. It is not until Jesus Christ pursues us as he does the lost sheep until he reveals himself to us that we begin to hunger and crave for him and we come into a relationship with him. Every single person must begin the journey following Christ at some point. Many of you have already done that and some of you are, are weighing whether or not you want to. Some of you right now are unaware that you even need to walk with Christ. For me, it came in 1988. I was a college uh, student here at the University of Iowa. And for the first 
number of years in my life, the first 21 years, my life could be categorized in, in two pursuits, both of them starting with self. The first was self-gratification. My number one goal in life was to gratify whatever desire I particularly had. And, and you can fill in the blanks on what those desires probably were as a college student. I didn't look much different from most of the college students here at the University of Iowa. You leave home, you go off to school, and it's a life of, of hedonism. You just pursue whatever it is you want. Whatever you want. And not that I started that pursuit when I went off to college. I was from the womb. That was my, uh, my goal, if I could articulate my goal in 1967 when I was born. It was self-gratification. That's the way we are. That's the way we are. Now, some of us have moral, uh, uh, more moral bearings than others, and we have a little bit more uh, fear of what people will think, and so we restrain ourselves in, in terms of the type of gratification we'll pursue. But nonetheless, our, our lives are, are bent on that, and mine certainly was no different. The second self that I was interested in pursuing was self-glorification. I wanted to make a name for myself. I wanted to be somebody. I wanted to be famous. I wanted to be known as, as Brooke Simpson, the guy who is, uh, wrestles, and he's really good, and ooh, look at him. He's really tough. That's what I wanted. That was my pursuit. It was all about self-gratification and self-glorification. And everything that I did, I did to achieve and advance those ends. Did I know that there was a God? Sure, I knew that there was a God. Did I know that there was a Jesus? Sure, I knew that there was a Jesus. I would even concede that at that time, if you would have asked me, is Jesus the Son of God? I would have said, well, yeah. I didn't know what that meant, mind you. And if you would have asked me, do you believe that he died on the cross for men's sins and rose again? I'd say, I guess. I, I, wasn't an, I wasn't an atheist. I just didn't have any idea what that meant. I'd never read the Bible. It didn't fit into my agenda of self-glorification and self-gratification. I kind of figured that if I started getting into the Bible, I might run into a roadblock on those two, uh, those two journeys that I was on. And, and I was right. But the starting point for me in, in walking in the light came in 1988 when I met my wife, who, uh, who was... Uh, a Christian at the time, but she was not walking in the light. Otherwise, she wouldn't have met me. There's, you, you don't meet people like me in church, or at least not then. So, so uh, in her pursuit of self-gratification, self-glorification, even though she knew her, uh, the, the Savior, who is the light, she was not currently walking in the light. If you go back to First John she would have been walking in darkness and was quite deceived and, and deluded in thinking that she was in intimate fellowship with Christ because she was in fellowship with me. So they're mutually exclusive. But she began to see the light. God began to call her back into the light, and she decided that she wanted to begin pursuing a relationship with Christ again. So she wanted to, to, to draw near to him, to forsake her sin. And so I was part of that journey with her, and she said, I want to start going to church again. I said, well, sure, I'll go. And I'd never been to church, and that led me here. Not here physically, but here, this body of believers, as uh, this body looked back in 1988. And this was the first church I, I really ever attended, not having met Jesus. Long story short, I received Christ in the spring of 1988, and, and I began this, this journey of, of walking in the light fumbling along in and out of the shadows, into the light, back into the darkness, and so forth and so on, and, and trying, to, uh, trying to make sense of, of what this walking in the light means and, and how, do I, how do I live out my faith when I don't even necessarily understand my faith. And as we talked about last week, walking in the light is a process. It's not an event. My justification, my coming into the light was an event. I have a spiritual birthday. Okay, that was a day that I, uh, where, where Christ, I was born again. But from the moment, from that point on, the journey is just that. It's a journey. And as I stated last week in, in 1 John, when it says that we walk in the light as he is in the light, walking in the light means primarily to know and to be known, to know Christ for who he is and to know myself for who I am in my sin but also in him. 